The Golden Hour Birth Podcast, a podcast about real birth stories and creating connections through our shared experiences. Childbirth isn't just about the child. It's about the person who gave birth, their lives, their wisdom, and their empowerment. We're Liz and Natalie, the Golden Hour Birth Podcast, and we're here to laugh with you, cry with you, and hold space for you. Welcome to the Golden Hour Birth Podcast. I am your co-host, Liz. And I'm your co-host, Natalie. And tonight we have my friend of a friend on, Ash. And thank you so much for coming on tonight. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So if you want to go ahead and tell us a little bit about you and your fam. Yes. So let's see. Started back, oh gosh, I don't even know years, but my partner and I are high school sweethearts. So we started dating when we were 15 Super young. I love those. Yes. <laughs> First love. Yes. All the things. It was great. Um, yeah. So we, yeah, we started in high school. We went, we grew up in St. Louis, um, went to two different private Catholic high schools, but we're introduced to mutual friends. And yeah, we just kind of hit it off. And I think we were like messaging on AOL, you know, AIM. Oh and, my God. Uh-huh. <laughs> <The days>. Age. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Location. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yes, it was. Yeah, the all my screen names had one, two, three, four, five. It was like we like little kid one, two, three, four, five. Crazy for soccer one, two, three, four, five. The most (laughs) random stuff. So yeah, I don't know how that was attractive, but it was, and so we continued talking. And then both of us had a tie to Mizzou, so his brother went to Mizzou, and then my my dad went to Mizzou for a bit, and then we're just a big Mizzou family, both Mm of us. So we both kind of decided on Mizzou just by chance. And yeah, it was it was great. We spent a lot of time together and gotten a lot of heated arguments. We both I joined a sorority, he joined a fraternity. So oftentimes we were with those people and mm-hmm. were going out and having fun. So that was really fun. And then after that, we both moved back to St. Louis. He is a teacher and then I am a social worker. So I went to graduate school to get my master's degree. And then I lived with a friend and then that was time being over and I worked through school and then we moved in together. And so funny story about that, that, because we first moved in, we were looking at places and we were like, okay, there's, you know, where do we go? We don't, Mm -hmm. this is our first time kind of moving out on our own. So we just got in like Webster Groves and we didn't really know a lot about the area. So Mm -hmm. we moved in on the street and we were newbies and we were, we were just out of school, so we hadn't really gone into the work world. We we're kind of home during the day, and we're like, okay, no one else is leaving. Okay, what's going on? Like, cool, everyone works from home. This is great. Yeah. And then we get this call, and they're like, hey, someone's, like, watching your house, like, watching, like, they know about it, or, like, they'd heard through, like, word of mouth through, like, the police, you know, you guys need to be careful. And we're like, oh, my gosh, like, what? what is going on? So then we, like, quickly contacted the place, and we're like, hey, like, we heard we're on watch. Like, we got to get out of here. So, like, we moved overnight <laughs> into a place in Maplewood, and we were there for a year, and it was, like, the best year. But it was just a really weird, crazy story. I don't know, like, how we heard, but, like, the landlord was so nice to, like, let us out. So we went through a lot of changes and adjustments. I don't even know what to even say about that. But so then we moved to Brentwood, and that was, like, our party house. That's where, like, Double D was, like, when that was up and running. And, yeah, that was really fun. So we had a lot of fun. And then we got married in 2015, I want to say. And so... That was like a really like a party wedding. It was mm-hmm. really fun. One of our friends emceed and just it was a blast. So we did that. And then we were together for about I guess like a year or two. And then I always knew that I wanted to have kids. Well, I always thought that pictured it growing yeah. up. I was like, yes, like I want. I actually wanted eight children. What? <laughs> <laughs> so that was like... <laughs> My, like, initial thought. Actually, in college, I was Kate plus eight, and I, like, dressed up, and I, like, I went to the dollar store, and I, like, got the babies, and I, like, tied them on to me. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm going to have to find a picture, because I feel like we've... (laughs) Yes. And, like, I had babies, like, trailing. They were, like, I was running around, like, the frat house, and they were, like, trailing me. I was like, okay. So, I, like, I was, like, I always picture myself as a mom. Like, I come from four kids. Um, I'm the oldest of four, and then... My husband is one of four as well. And so we were like, we always wanted a big family. Yeah. So I was like, I want to be a mom. That's like my my dream. And like, I was like, I want to be a stay-at-home mom. That was like what I was picturing mm-hmm. for myself. So I was like, okay, I want to get pregnant kind of early on. Yeah. And so Jamie was just kind of, he's so easy 
you going. So it's long for the ride. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sure. Let's do it. You know, so uh, his, we, we were kind of in the middle of like marriages and stuff like that. So we were kind of the first to like start trying and mm. I thought it'd be easy. Right. I was like, oh, or hoped it would be easy, I guess. And it wasn't. Mm-hmm. So I think it was probably like a year. We almost up to a year had been trying and it just wasn't working out. I was talking with my doctor about what are our options because I was getting frustrated, even though I know people try for much longer. And, but you know, when you're in that moment, you're like thinking about, you know, you and what you're going through. So my doctor was really great. She was like, yeah, we can definitely look at options. There's medicine, you know, there's, you know, going for the sperm sample to see if something, you know, wrong with him, blah, blah. blah. So I was like, okay, well, let's start that process. Yeah. So he, while we were going to start that, it was like right the week before we were in a in our car and were like rear ended pretty oh. severely. I don't. They were probably going like fifty, oh, wow. and it was we were at a stoplight, oh my God. Oh my God. and so they hit us. And my dog was in the car too, on my lap. Oh. They hit us and they backed up and they left the scene. Are you serious? Yeah, oh. yeah. If you're listening to this. St. Louis sometimes. Yeah. So it was right at the city county line because we're from, we live in South County, right next to the city county line. And so, yeah, they hit and ran. And I was just like really in shock, I think, because the whole window was, you know, like the car was, yeah, totaled. And so luckily they didn't get very far because, I mean, they couldn't. Yeah. Like, so we made the report, the car was towed, we went home. I didn't really think anything of it, but I wanted, I knew like, I had back problems before, so I was like, I probably should go see a doctor just to make sure I'm okay. Yeah. So I go to my – I didn't know, like, a doctor to go to. I was at that period in your life where you should, but you (laughs) didn't have one. Yeah. So um, I just looked up, like, Mercy, like, what else – what is out there? (laughs) Found this guy. I was like, oh, he looks young. Cool. Mm -hmm. Bias. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll go to him. So I go to him and he's, I don't even know, he did like very minimal talking to me. And then he like was doing a lot of charting. And I was like, what is he doing? I'm just here to get checked out. Like maybe I need like physical therapy. I don't know. Like I just want to make sure my back is okay. And so he just, he didn't really have an opinion on what to do next. Mm -hmm. And I was like, can I go to a chiropractor? He was like, I don't know if I recommend that. And I'm like, what do you recommend? Like, (laughs) I'm in some pain. Hello. And he was like, yeah, you can do whatever you want. And I was like, okay. So I (laughs) just went and found a chiropractor. And I was like, I think I need an adjustment. I was in this really bad car accident. Yada, yada, yada. And then I had an OB appointment the next week. So I go, I get the adjustment. And he was like, oh, yeah, could you be pregnant? I'm like, no, we've been trying for so long. Like, it's not working. Da, da, da. I was like, I have my appointment next week. And so I went to, and it was right around Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, well, I really hope this happens. And then on Valentine's Day, I took a pregnancy test and it was positive. So it was, it was great. That was a really (laughs) awesome, like, just, I don't know, surprise for me. And then I went to the OB and they were looking at my chart and they're like, oh, that's, this is interesting. Did you just go to this doctor recently? And I was like, yeah. And he was, they were like, oh, okay, well, they put in your chart that you're obese. And I'm like, okay, like, what, why would he just put that in without talking to me? That's kind of like, I don't know, just I feel like you should talk to someone if you're concerned about their health. Yeah. I was like, and now I'm finding out I'm pregnant. What does that play into things like for when he just saw me that day one time, yeah. you know? And so I was really frustrated by that. Not, not because I didn't know that I was like, overweight-ish, but just the fact of not having conversation with me or not even telling me what he's writing down, right? Yeah. yeah. That's And then it's in your weird. chart for all your other Exactly. Providers. And they, they said, we can't take it off. Like, he put it in, we can't take it off. Oh, and I okay. was like, okay, let me just sit with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Give him a review. Yeah. Did you yeah. just look really Did bad? He... That's my manner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did he do like a full physical on you when you came Not out? really. I mean, I really think it was so brief. And that's why I was so flabbergasted because I was like, did he even weigh me? I don't even know how he got this information. Like he just looked at me and was like, okay, she's overweight, which like my weight fluctuates a lot yeah. um, of my life. And so I was like, okay, that's great. So I was really, I couldn't really hear anything that first appointment because I was yeah. like seeing and hearing red from them telling me that. So I was like kind of, that kind of like overshadowed things, but I was So excited, obviously, just in general, but also really anxious because I'm like, okay, like 
I was in this car accident. <laughs> now I'm pregnant. <laughs> like, what? This has just all happened really, really fast. And anxiety had always been, like, in my life. Mm-hmm. But I think just, like, it's real, right? It's becoming, like, a real thing. You're becoming a mom. Like, oh, shit. So, yeah, that was a lot to kind of take in. And then I was just, like, super anxious for the next appointment. Like, I always... I would just have it on my mind always. To, okay, what's what are they going to say? They're going to feel. They're going to hear the heartbeat. Or are they yeah. not? Just that feeling. So that was that was a lot. But once we got through the twelve weeks, I think I was feeling like a lot, a lot better. Mm-hmm. And then I started telling people, and that was cool and nice. And then everyone was super excited. And yeah, so that was a good period of twelve weeks to like thirty. So since I'd been a social worker, the job is stressful. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just I don't know, like. That just is what it is. And I, yeah. I know that. I didn't know how it would affect being a mom or being pregnant. And so I think towards 30 weeks, I was starting to feel like super stressed out, not only my work, but then being a mom mm-hmm. or becoming a mom. And so I would get my blood pressure checked at school by my school nurse that I was working at. And sometimes she'd be like, oh, yeah, it's pretty high. Slow down. Try to slow yeah. down, you know. So I was like trying to take it easy. At the same time, it's you can't really predict what the day will bring. Yeah. So it was still pretty stressful. And I was communicating all this to my doctor and she was like being super supportive and she's like, whatever you need, like we will, you know, do what is best for you and the baby. And so it probably got 37 weeks and my blood pressure was just like through the roof at school. And she was like, you need to go to your OB. Excuse me. So I went there and she was like, yeah, I don't, (laughs) this is like not going away. You know, your job is your job. And, but we kind of have to figure out what the plan is, you know, for your baby, because we want to keep your baby healthy and you healthy so that you don't have any issues. Cause it was like preeclampsia, pre -pre preeclampsia, basically. Like you are going to be going into that if we don't do something. I was going to ask you, like, did you have other signs or symptoms of preeclampsia or was it just the high blood pressure? High blood pressure, headaches, but I had gotten headaches a lot in my life. So I wasn't really thinking about that. Yeah. That was like the main one. So that's why they weren't like quick to be like, oh, it is this, but it could be Mm -hmm. turning into this if you don't do something. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm going to try give it another shot. And so go back to my 38 week appointment and I'm like, yeah, like this isn't, <laughs> this isn't working. Like I can't, you know, focus on work and, you know, I'm stressed out da, da, da. and she's like, all right, just, we're going to put you on bed rest. Like I'm just making that decision. Like that's going to be, I think best for you right now is just to go on bed rest. So you're not stressed out. You're not thinking about all this. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cause then you hear all these stories of like doctors, no, you can do it. We're pushed through. Da, da, da. But I felt like she really listened to me. Yeah. So I was really grateful for that. Yeah. Um, and then I'm like, okay, sweet. I can kind of like chill at home. <laughs> I wasn't going to have a someone to cover for me from maternity leave. That was a little stressful. So I was like, let me get some things together so I can ha- prepare my team for like when I'm out. Because I don't want to be answering the phone all the time while I'm out. So I tried to get some things together and share some things with my counselors that were there. And then she was like, all right, come back 39 weeks and or, you know, around there. We'll just schedule an induction, you know, around 39 weeks. And mm-hmm. I was like, OK, yippee, let's get this baby out of here. I'm ready. So she scheduled the induction for 39 weeks. Maybe it was like the day after 39 weeks. And it was like, were you like are scheduled for 6 a.m. You have to call. Yeah. You know? <laughs> no, no, not yet. Yeah. Can't, you know, we're booked today. I'm like booked. I got to have a baby. <laughs> Clear the schedule. <laughs> so luckily, one of my best friends is a labor and delivery nurse. And so um, just talking with her about, hey, can you check on the list? Like, <laughs> Where am I at? Um, And then, yeah. And then I'm just at home, like bouncing on the ball because you're like, okay, I should get ready. Like I should prepare. (laughs) Yeah. Do something. Yeah. I think I had heard walk on uneven surfaces. Yeah. Curb walking. Mm -hmm. I did that all the time. You did? Yeah. Okay. So I was like, all right, let's try that. I don't know if spicy food, I already like spicy food. So Mm -hmm. sex. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing was working. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing was moving. And so I was like, all right, I'll just have to be patient. Just wait until... They call me. Mm -hmm. So they ended up calling me in and, you know, I had everything packed, ready to go, thankfully, because I had had the time to do all that. One of the major things I really wanted was creating like 
a vision for me as I'm like in the hospital and, you know, going through pain and stuff like that. So I brought in like pictures of like my friends and influential people in my life. One being my great aunt Ruth, who my daughter is named after. And so one of us, and she's no longer um, with us, but one of her and I, and that was like really important to me because I lost my grandma when I was really young. So she was kind of like a grandma to me. Mm -hmm. So I had that, I had it all set up. My best yeah. friend had done all of the, I don't know, like babies come, like decorations. Yeah, signs. Yeah. Yeah, signs. So it was so sweet. Yeah. So I felt like really good. I was like, yes, this is great. Oh my God, this thing's going so great. And yeah. And then I also prepared a bomb ass labor playlist. <laughs> Cause I was like, you got to have music. I love music. And that's just a big part of my life. That's just a coping thing for me. Have a good playlist. So I brought a speaker. I was jamming. It was You're all ready. yes, I was all yeah. ready. And then my husband was like, "Okay, I'll I'll take some notes. We'll see, you know, what happens." And I'm like, "Okay, okay, yeah, take some notes, please." Because <laughs> what am I doing here? Just having a baby, you know? The normal. Oh, this is uncomfortable. I'm like, "You're uncomfortable," you know, the whole thing. I was yeah. just he's eating, and I'm like, "Wait a minute, I want to eat." I think his parents. I think we realized, okay, this is gonna be a long time. Yeah. And so I think his parent his parents brought up like. The Seinfeld DVDs, because in the hospital, oh they God. only have a DVD yeah. player. Yeah. So we were just playing it on a repeat. Yeah. Um, and I was like, okay, I'll re relax for a little bit. I'm going to pull up my notes, too, so I can see what all went down, because mm -hmm. I really wasn't with it <laughs> a lot of the time. Get to the hospital. Yeah, so we get there, it looks like, at 7.30 a.m. Yes. Okay. So not too far off 6 a.m. Yeah. I thought it was like a super long time. Every yeah. minute counts when you're yes. ready yeah. to have a baby. <laughs> Yes. Um, yeah. So 730, my friend checked us in. You know, we got all the pictures like we're here. It looks like I got into my room around 830. So not a long time like waiting. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, OK, can you like pick hand pick nurses for me? <laughs> <laughs> I was one of those. So, yeah. And so I had a really awesome like nurse team all throughout the whole time I was there. It was amazing. Like the nurses were were amazing. So I'm really grateful for that. And then they were like, okay, we're going to start the process because you're at zero. Like, you're not dilated at all. Nothing. <laughs> zero, zero, dot zero. It's like, all right, great. Okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> so then I did the cytotech. That was all day. I think they did three different rounds of it. Mm -hmm. So they kept trying to do that. And then that ended up till nighttime. And then that's when I started the other medication, which is the cer Cervidil. Mm -hmm. So then I'm realizing like, oh, this is this is not good. We're really like trying a lot of, you know, different interventions. I'm bouncing on the ball. My blood pressure is OK. It wasn't like great, but it wasn't horrible. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I was just like things are getting intense and it's been 24 hours then. So I got there on Wednesday. This is Thursday. The cervidal sits in all night, I think I, I remember. And so then they remove it mm -hmm. and they're like they check again and they're like, zero you're really not moving like mm -hmm. at all and I was like okay I don't know what that means but okay yeah let's yeah. keep going so then they started Pitocin and that wasn't doing anything and so they're like okay we'll do the Foley bulb and I had we had taken the birth class yeah. you know that you take in the CPR and all that and so you know of course in the class I'm like oh that's not gonna happen that's not gonna happen and they talk I remember them talking about the Foley bulb and I'm like Oh shit, I definitely don't want that to happen. Yeah. And so when they said it, I like freaked out. I was like, no. <laughs> Cause I, all I remember is they blow up this freaking balloon and then they tug on it every. Oh um, mm -hmm. It's bad. Oh, it's really bad. That's Cause like all I've heard is like bad. It's uh huh. Good. So having yeah. the Pitocin was was good, but the full, yeah, the Foley bulb was painful. Mm -hmm. I was, yeah, I was in a lot of pain and I, I think I had a really nice room where you have a bathroom and stuff like that. So I think you even tried like the bath or like trying to do other things, be in other places. And they kept pulling on the Foley bulb till it came out. And so that was a four hour process of them pulling on it. But then once they pulled it out, I was at four centimeters. Oh. So it did its job yeah. of like what it was supposed to do, but it was definitely the most painful yeah. thing, the pain that mm -hmm. I went through. So that then broke my water. And so then they're like, okay, let's do an epidural. I mean, this is like kind of nighttime, like 6.30 p.m. I'm at four centimeters in an epidural. So they do the epidural, but it somehow it gets messed up and they don't, it doesn't actually work. Um, so I was like, 
okay, I'm feeling like everything. Is this what you're supposed to feel? And they're like, no, it didn't work on you, apparently, or it was in the wrong spot. But we have the best person that did it. So we don't know what happened. And I was like, okay, okay. So I was like, well, I, I don't know what to do now. You know, like I'm at four, but I, you know, I guess I'm just gonna have to naturally do it, which is fine. But I also was scared. (laughs) Did they say like, they couldn't call him back? or They were gonna try. So they said they were gonna try. So I was like getting pretty agitated at that time. I also, they gave me something like a pain med, but it made me very itchy. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what that was. But I was like, super itchy and I was only comfortable if I was able to doze off and go to sleep. Yeah. So I was kind of like in and out of sleep. So then my doctor arrives like that night at like midnight <clears throat> and she checks and it's six centimeters. And so I was like, all right, we're improving. We're going like, this is great. I'm in a ton of pain because the epidural wasn't working. And so <laughs> I've got my playlist on and I'm like trying to like really push through and sing and just try to get my mind off of it. Yeah. I kind of got a little, I like needed something to do with like my hand. So essentially my partner became a punching bag and I just started punching him and he's this big guy and he can take, but I needed to get out the pain, you know, like I was in so much pain. Like I just felt like I had to do something. So yeah, I just started like punching him and that was really helpful, which is weird. Take note, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> Who comes in and like the lady is like literally punching her partner? I mean, that's a little concerning, but yeah, it worked. So thank you for my husband for that because whew, I don't know if I would have loved that, but it was, yeah, it was all a blur. Like it was happening, you know, and we're up at that point, 48 hours, you yeah. know, not really having a go out of sleep. No. So there's no sleeping in the hospital. None. <laughs> yes. And so then it looks like 2 30 a.m is when the nurse checks and I'm at 10 centimeters. So then they tell my best friend to come up because she was not there at the time and my parents to come up. And then at 3 a.m. we start like pushing. But I didn't know that the doctor's not there (laughs) when you start pushing. Mm -hmm. Really, like they just kind of they decide, you know, like what when to call the doctor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, call the doctor. (laughs) Like, Where is the doctor? Like, I'm going to have this baby and there's not going to be anyone here to stitch me up. What is <laughs> what is going on right now? And so then they're like, OK, push. And then at 345 in the morning, they're like, stop pushing. And so they're like, you are like, you know, like we need to rest. This is just not going in a good direction. So I was like, OK, I'll take a C-section. <laughs> like at this point, I'm like, I'm done. Like I'm, I want a C-section. I don't care. Like I'm really just at my, like, I can't do any more. I mean, they're like, they said, okay, we're going to take a break. Like, we're just going to calm down. And so they gave me like probably 30 minutes and I did. I took a breather. I asked for a chaplain or something and I'm not religious, <laughs> but I was like, at this point, I was like, I'll take anything. I don't care who it is, you know, send someone in because I'm Yeah, done. But I, but they're like, no, we want you to keep going. We think you can do this. I was like, okay, let me center myself. (laughs) And so they left. They came back in. I said, okay, I will give it another try. So 4 30 a.m., I started pushing again. And then they didn't call my doctor until 5 40 a.m. So then they said, stop pushing at 5 40. And then at 6 05 is when my doctor came back in. And then 6 09 is when I had my daughter. So it happened fast at the end, but like leading up to it, I was like, no, yeah. <laughs> this is not, yeah. this is not what I thought it was at all. Yeah. yeah. So it was yeah. 71 hours yeah. from start oh to finish. Yeah. So you guys went in on Wednesday morning <laughs> and you had her Saturday morning? Friday morning. Friday. Okay. Yes. Oh my God. So yeah, Wednesday. Yep. To Yeah. It's seven, so Wednesday it went at 730 and then Friday at six, she was born. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So that was really, yeah, that was, I was at that point just done, done, you know, and I didn't know what was going on. I knew that I didn't want to breastfeed. Like, I'd made that decision way when I got pregnant. I, like, had known that I know that I didn't want to do that. And so, and I made that clear to my doctor, and she was totally fine with it. And the nurses, they were was like, yeah, that's totally fine. So I had the tight sports bra on and, you know, wasn't going to do the feeding immediately, obviously. But they like put the baby on my chest, which I was like, yes, I love this baby, but I'm so tired. And I don't even know what to do because I'm just like depleted <laughs> of like all of my energy. So it's it's kind of a mixed feeling because I'm like, 
I don't know, you see these pictures of like everyone, oh my gosh, and that's great if you have the energy, but you have to understand that some people might not have that energy Mm -hmm. to like do that in that moment. And that's kind of how I felt. And I felt bad about it, but I was like, I literally cannot like move. Like I'm like, (laughs) I'm so tired, but so happy. Yeah. Right. You know? Did the anesthesiologist ever come back or did you do the whole thing? Yes. I feel like I'm looking at my notes of when that happened. They came, so they did it twice. They definitely did the epidural twice. They tried, or they tried it twice, yeah. and it didn't. It wasn't they successful never. either time. Oh so you yeah. felt everything. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I was like, okay. Yeah. yeah, a long time. Yes, for your body to be working. Yeah. Yes, yeah. right. <laughs> like I'm like, this is not normal. I don't and know. Not just physical too. The mental. Hmm. Hmm. And pushing yeah. is, you know, it's one thing to have, like, your body go through all these, like, different interventions, but then the pushing. Yes. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. Every single second is so hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so hard. And so, yeah, energy giving. I'm just, like, thinking, like, these this baby's, like, shoulder. I mean, like, everything has to come out. And I'm yeah. like, oh, my God. Like, how am I going to do that, you know? It's like, rose to, like, I just... I mean, it is, it is what it's not, you know, it's yeah. a bodily thing, but it's just, I, I don't want to be looking like, I don't know some people do mirrors, which is awesome. That's cool. I'm just not into that. My husband is a science teacher, so he does have a little bit of interest in, you know, those sorts of things. But I, I was like, no, thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nothing to do it. He's and then this, and then they, once the baby comes out, then they'll push again, right? To deliver the That's placenta. Awesome. And I was like, what? <laughs> Push again. No. And he's, he came out and it was like a tea bag. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's, what? That's the best description I've ever heard. A bloody tea bag. Yes. Yes. I was like, I do not want to see any of that. I will God. faint. Get me out of here. Yeah. That is disgusting. Yeah. yeah. So, and then, you know, she's down there stitching you up. Yeah. And I'm just like, what? just happened what just happened (laughs) and so then something happened immediately after I had her I started getting like itching again it was really and I I was chattering my teeth I don't know is that a thing I've definitely done that okay so I was like uncontrollably chattering like like constantly I actually had that happen with Violet my last birth okay so I didn't know what was going on no one explained it to me and they also don't have a baby at 6 a.m. because the shift change, yep. you know, is 7 a.m. So, you know, they're trying to get you out of the room because they have shift change. So they're like, we got to move you to postpartum. And I was like, I just had this baby 10 minutes ago. Give me a minute. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, nope, we got to go. Like, we're changing nurses. And I was like, what? okay. They usually okay. wait until you, like, can get up to go pee. Right. Yeah. No, I was in the bed still. I didn't even <sighs> do anything. Oh, my God. Yeah. Did so they get wheeled- to the wheelchair? Okay. Yes. I did get to a wheelchair with a lot of help. Yeah. yeah. But I was still, sh- I was chattering and, you know, had the baby and they like, wheeled us over to the postpartum. And then when I got there, the the nurse that I had was really nice. At that point, I was kind of like, I, I, I need you to take this baby. I love this baby and I need you to take the baby because mm-hmm. I cannot stay awake. I am so exhausted. My husband's exhausted. Like we've yeah. literally been awake for 72 hours. We yeah. cannot do that right now. So she did, which was really nice. Mm-hmm. And she took the baby to the nursery. And I know people have mixed thoughts on that. But like at that point, I was like, I have to listen to my body. Yeah, that's the option too. You yes. Know about these like baby friendly hospitals in air quotes because they're not, well, they're baby friendly, mm-hmm. I guess, but they're not mom friendly. Mm-hmm. They, they don't even have nurseries. Yeah. yeah in some hospitals now. Mm-hmm. And it's, you're, you're, Forcing a mom. Yes. <laughs> just went through a marathon. Yes. Yeah. And sometimes a C-section. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I know. Here's yeah. Baby. Like, right. even get up. What if their partner has to go to work? Yeah. Yes. And like leaves them. Yes. Yeah. So I was like, no. Yeah. 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 So she did take the baby and then came back. Oh, sorry. The baby. <laughs> My child's name is Cameron. <laughs> There's the baby. She's you know. Just so. someone's baby she took and came back eventually. <laughs> no, the baby's name is Cameron, Cameron Ruth, named after um, my great grandma or my great aunt, but she was really like a grandma to me. So yeah, I was, yeah. So we got that sleep, you know, for whatever it was, maybe an hour. And they brought the yeah. baby back and they're like feeding time. And I was like, oh, 
I'm not breastfeeding. And yeah, so they were like, okay, we'll get you formula and everything. So that was amazing. It was good to like actually close my eyes for an hour. And then I was like, okay, now I can be, you know, be present and try, you know, my best to be a mom. So that nurse though left and some other nurse came that was like there for three days or there until I discharged. And she was horrible. So she never really checked on me. I didn't really know anything was going on. Jamie did everything for me to take care of me, to go to the bathroom, to like shower, to bathe me till because I like couldn't, I don't know. It was so exhausted. Yeah. She was not helpful. And it was, it was really sad. That was a really hard part, I think, because I was like, I kind of felt let down. Like I was picturing like someone that would be super helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And then this lactation consultant kept coming in. And my husband was like, she's not breastfeeding. Stop coming in. Three times. Notes or something? Yeah. Like, I was like, can you not talk to people? Is this not a thing? Like that yeah. other people don't do it? Okay, well, I'm not doing it. I don't yeah. know what else to say to you. Like, it's not happening. <laughs> I feel like, the, I don't know. Maybe this is like just my experience. I feel like people are like, when's the lactation consultant coming in? Mm-hmm. When's it coming in? Mm-hmm. So it's kind of funny. Yes, I heard the that. Opposite. Yeah, they're all in her room. <laughs> yeah, seriously, the one that's not breastfeeding. <laughs> Oh my God, you're so right. My friends still tell me that all the time. They're like, where is she? And I was, they were in my room. And I don't I don't know why. I sent them away. Yes. <laughs> that and like the chaplains kept coming in too, which is, I know it's a religious hospital, so that was fine. But it was just funny because I was just like, what, what is going on? Did you see a chaplain? And when you were in labor? I did. And they did. did. They prayed over me. Yes. I Because I was like, call the chaplain. Call the priest. I don't care who's in here. A nun. Find someone. <laughs> I'm a surprise. I know. <laughs> that does not sound like you. No, but. <laughs> you really had conversations you know, about this a little bit. Yes. Like I'm <laughs> out of organized religion right now. And and so, yeah, that's just a part of my life that I like, yeah, have decided. I kind of was going through that process at the time. But mm. at that time, I was like, anything, <laughs> just anything. Give me help, please, someone. <laughs> which is, yeah, which is, it's good, right? That's why faith is there for a reason for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And I do have faith still, just not the organized part of the religion. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But no, so that was, postpartum was, I actually wrote a review <laughs> because I was so upset about the postpartum experience. It was oh. so bad. Yeah, it was really yeah. sad. Yeah, that really bugs me. Because I had the most amazing labor and delivery nurses. Yeah. So seven of them, all seven of them were amazing. And then I get like one that was transitioned and then one that was there for the time I was there. So I don't know what her problem was. She seemed like she just didn't want to be there. Mm. So, you know, you know, like that's how you kind of, that's why if you're in a job, you hate it, get out. Yeah. Like, <laughs> quit. Because people know, you Especially know. Especially a job where you're caring for people. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that was really discouraging and disheartening. But we, like, begged to get out. You know, when you're like, oh, this is – some of my friends are like, I wish I could stay forever because the nurses were so helpful. Yeah. I was like, get me out of here. I did – okay, there was something that I did do wrong. So some of my family members came to visit, and they brought champagne. And I was given a glass. I may have taken a sip. And she came in, and she was like, you can't be having that. And I was like, well, I'm not breastfeeding, so I don't really know – why (laughs) but it was just kind of like an awkward conversation so maybe yeah we brought champagne okay for a second okay so that's not a like total no-no okay maybe okay well whoops yeah she was i think that really kind of maybe impacted uh, i can see for breastfeeding but maybe just blood blood loss or something Mm. or because it's just a hospital (laughs) yeah Yeah, maybe that's frowned upon (laughs) in my family it's hospitals funerals we're you know it's all yeah yeah we're drinking (laughs) okay celebrating yeah so that was that was interesting that's the only thing i can think of about why oh and also cam had jaundice Mm -hmm. very yes jaundice very jaundice baby so she was in the, the lights. lights we took a picture of her like she was like the from the incredibles you know with the with mask the oh my god <laughs> it's the cutest picture Aww. that was really sad that was yeah. really because you couldn't you can't do anything they have to they have to lay there like yeah. they for a period amount of time and then they were like kind of questioning if they were going to discharge her because she was so jaundice mm-hmm. so then like when we got home we like put her in the room with the light mm. i don't know if that helped but that was something that we did because we wanted to make sure we didn't go back to the hospital. Yeah. 
But yeah, that's kind of the birth story. And I felt a lot of trauma from it. And so I didn't realize that, though, at the time. Mm -hmm. It kind of took me a couple months. And I was like, oh, wow, that was really tough and uh, traumatic for me. I didn't know that it, it could be that way. And so I was having like a lot of postpartum anxiety and just sadness that it wasn't like what you imagine or what you picture. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that was really tough. Yeah. So then we went to Florida with my family and she was probably like f five, six, seven months old. It was in the summertime. So from October to the summer. We went to Florida and I was like really struggling with my anxiety and like everything about her. It's sleep a lot too. Yeah. I wasn't getting a lot of sleep. So mm -hmm. that, you know, heightens things. Mm -hmm. But just everything about the trip, everything about her and being a mom, I was so anxious and I was having like really intrusive thoughts. You know, what if she wasn't going to wake up? You know, what if we were in a car accident? Everything like to the extreme. Yeah. So I like had a lot of panic attacks in Florida and I was like, oh, God, I need to get some help. <laughs> this is this is not good. This is not good at all. So I called a psychiatrist when I was there to make an appointment for when I got home. And that was I saw Dr. McKean, who is like really highly regarded psychiatrist. And so I was really happy to get in with her and through behavioral medicine. Yeah. Institute. Mm -hmm. And so I saw her for postpartum and I I really wasn't like growing up. And like just my view on medication, I was like, oh, I don't really know about medication. You know, I just wasn't raised to take it a lot, you know, at the time. So I was really iffy on that. But once I did, I felt a world of difference. Like That's just, awesome. yeah. So that was really helpful. And then seeing a therapist and I went to one that was actually postpartum. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the best experience. She's very highly well-known. I, mean, I didn't have the best experience, which probably because I had a lot of blockage too. I wasn't super like ready to talk about things, I think, at that time. So mm -hmm. it just wasn't a good time for me. So I didn't do that. And also, everything's out of pocket. Yep. I mean, I'm like, I can't afford this. Like, yeah. it's $150 every time I see you. Yeah. So that was tough because I was, like, really hitting with, like, mental health, which I'm in the mental health field. But personally, myself, then you're like, oh, wow, like, this this sucks. Yeah. yeah. They want you to push Oh, well, just go see someone. Go see someone. Yeah. It's tough to see it someone. It is. It's hard this, to find someone. This is who I and mm -hmm. it's hard to ask when you were looking for one. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ash knows everybody. So I'm oh, very, thank yes. Thank you because I'm, I found yeah. my lovely therapist. Oh, good. Yeah. So that's, I'm really good at finding people. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> it is really, a, yes, a strength. Like case management is a strength in my, it's just as a social worker. And I just, I want people to have as seamless as you know, so that's why I always ask insurance. Like, I asked, do you want, you know, prefer any sort of gender? Do you prefer what issues are you going through? Because I want to match. I don't want to just give a list and yeah. just say, good luck. Yeah. Like, because I know the, how that feels. It's not not good. Yep. So that is my goal is to make sure if I get, and I love it, that's like my passion is finding like people matches. So that's, you that makes me happy. my job. My old job. You should have my job. Huh. That's literally what I was doing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, you we'll see. You do it for like... All of St. Louis. Though. I do. I like, really, yeah. You can I start a service or something like. Yeah. yeah. I get. I don't know. Twenty five dollar consult or fifty dollar consult or something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to. Yeah, make money off of it, but I just want it to remove barriers to mental health because that's just really important to me. Mm -hmm. So, I did that. I saw. I did, ended the time with the therapist. Couldn't afford it, and I also wasn't in a good space. Found another therapist, and did a lot of work with her. A lot of work around just being a mom and just mm -hmm. postpartum anxiety. It was a really good fit. And I was able to process a lot of that birth story. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm able to talk about it today. Because before I was just like, I was almost like trauma vomiting too. I felt really bad now that I realize it. Anytime I would be like, hey, like, how was, you know, you're like having cam. I was like, it fucking sucked. I, which is horrible. You don't want to like, and I, I struggle with that because I like to be authentic but you don't want to, like, scare someone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that's not good. Mm -hmm, yeah. I don't know. And so I try to – now I try to tone it down or, like, how much do you want to hear? Or, yeah. you know, like, mm -hmm. I can talk about it more, but, like, then, no, I could not talk about it. I was just, like, it was horrific. Like, it was, yeah, really tough. Yeah. So, yeah, I've done a lot of work around it for therapy, which has been amazing. And I kind of decided I don't want to have any more kids. So, good. yeah, it's weird. From eight 
to Octomom <laughs> to one. Yeah. 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 It's weird. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> it's weird to say because like everyone's I think everyone's really shocked by it that I'm like, no, I don't really want any more kids. Yeah. Um, it would be a lot too. I always think of like teachers to then coming home mm-hmm. to a big house. Like I remember a math teacher of mine in high school had six kids. Yeah. I was like, how do you deal with us all day? Then going home to six of them. That'd be really hard. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't blame you. Especially if your child is spirited. And. Girl, I got myself a spirit. Yeah. (laughs) So she is on fire. Her fire is, she's going to do something amazing one day. Mm -hmm. And very challenging for me. Because I'm an emotional person. And she's an emotional person. So us together is like, it's not, I mean, last night bedtime took an hour and a half for me. Oh, my God. I hate bedtime. Yeah. Oh, my God. So she, and she's never slept through the night. I can count on probably two hands the amount of time she slept through the night. And she's four. So I'm like, the sleep is real deprivation. I just, I, I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't imagine not getting sleep again. Like everyone's, oh, well, the next one would be really easy sleeper. And I'm like. But what if it's not? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't take that chance. Could be worse. <laughs> yeah. You never know. I know. Could be lighting things on fire. I don't know. Like, I don't want to take my chances. Yeah. Like- <laughs> Good idea because usually the usually the first one, I feel like, an angel, like mine. Yeah. And then they, like, trick you into having another one. And you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, not falling for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, in social work, too, I see a lot of, you know, kids and, and stuff. And everyone always thinks, okay, it's like a lot of times the environment. But it's also – your makeup Mm -hmm. and your biology. And so I just don't want to take the chances. Like I don't, I guess I could bring them up in a loving home, but I don't want them to have what I got too. (laughs) I don't want to give them more emotions and, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's hard to make the decision, but yeah, now we're really, really pushing for the vasectomy. It's my, (laughs) it's my goal. I'm not supposed to talk about it anymore because I talk about it too much, but just for this podcast. Yeah. It's just the easier route here. Like, I know. Oh, I Come on. Like, yeah. But, you know, I'm... I think every dude should. Yeah. If yeah. you're not intending to have kids. Yeah. Why not? What do you need active sperm for? I don't know. Sam I don't know. Sam already talks about his, and I'm like, but wait, like, I might want a third. I don't know. Don't do that to me yet. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. See, and I don't know, like, when you know, no. You know, I don't know. I guess it's like... You do. I mean, I feel like I do, but yeah. everyone's you just never know. And I'm like, do you not? <laughs> I don't know. I have a gut feeling that I'm done. Okay, yeah. so you're like feeling strongly, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm. I'm good. Yeah, We're good. And like, it's expensive. Who's gonna pay for that? Who's gonna pay for another child? Like, it's ex- yeah, the expensive. birth cost of me being in the hospital for 71 hours was a payment for the house. Like, it was like I think it was five grand. Jesus. Fuck. Yeah, and then. Daycare, mm-hmm. which is yeah. like outrageous, and then when you have another, then it just extends the amount of time. Yeah, you're gonna pay for daycare. Yeah, or yeah. starting kindergarten next year, and I'm like, ching. Yes, mm-hmm. right. Save Ready me for that mortgage yes. payment back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. and I know all of these things, and I'm still like, mm-hmm. I could have one more. Yeah, yeah. And, and well, that's if I was thirty. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I'm forty. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You just different Adam. boats. For sure. Yeah. 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 Different boats. <laughs> so, yeah, Cam is your spirited baby. She and is. She's going to do something with this world, but she might kill you in the meantime. Correct. <laughs> if <laughs> she doesn't, totally yes. <laughs> it, my husband is so good with her. Oh, my gosh. So good for her. He plays with her, does all the pretend stuff. Which I cannot do. I'm I so annoyed. With that too. Oh my god, she's like, be the mean one. I'm like, I can't be the mean. What do you mean, be the mean one? What kind of like direction is that? And so, yeah, it's very hard for me, especially when I'm like coming home from work. I'm so drained, and then to think about playing is a little daunting. But we do. I like to do activities with her. So I'll do take her to the park, or mm-hmm. you know, do things to where she's active. So it's not like I have to entertain. Yes, all the time. And we like yes, see same. friends and. Our neighbors, like, she's best friends with our neighbors. And so, like, they hang out all the time. Aww. And so I don't really feel like she's missing. And then she also has a cousin who's, like, a year apart. So that's I feel like awesome. she has a good group socially. Yeah. That's fun. Where, yeah. And I also like to spoil a little bit. 
Yeah. I mean, I don't, we don't have a lot of money being a teacher and social worker, but it's something, you know, something to where like I can sometimes splurge and be like, oh yeah, you can have that toy Yeah. versus I think if I was like really strapped on, you know, and not being able to do that. So that is a plus. Yeah, yeah for sure. Eight kids, you can't take them to Target. <laughs> Heck no. <laughs> no. You just have them dragging behind you. It was so bad. You driving a conversion van. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Transport passenger van. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. Beep, beep. Uh, <laughs> oh, Daniel's are home. Now Daniel. <laughs> thank God that's, that ship has sailed of that thought or vision. Yikes. Yeah. No. So, yeah, that's really it all i can think of yeah is there any other questions you guys have for me do you have any advice for anyone like going through infertility or postpartum Mm. yeah i mean i think the more we share the more open we are it just feels better versus just like keeping it a secret or i totally respect that if you want to keep it private but just to be real like it really gives you a release and i feel i felt that a lot and i try to do that with all a lot of different aspects of my life just to put it out there. And I take, you know, psychiatric medicine. I, you know, to go out with my friends and go do this or that. And just the way I live my life or like staying up for people's rights. Like I, I make it out there because I think it's important and I think you have to be you and then other people will see that and they appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So I think whatever you do, just try and be, real with yourself or real with other people, like a close knit group, if you can and share, share with them about what you're going through because it's hard to do it alone. And there's, you know, there's a lot of strategies you can try, but I mean, I don't think anything's better than having a friend or someone to talk to with it about it and therapy, like therapy, therapy saved me hundred percent, please. (laughs) If you need, yes, help. I will help you. (laughs) Yes. I mean, I'm all for that. So I will definitely. And then also like, body image too it's just such a, something that like really i'm interested in it with the whole experience of being labeled you're mm-hmm. obese and da 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 which is based off of bmi yes later. that's yeah. not even a real thing okay, yeah, so BMI. okay yeah, yeah back it up yeah. so yeah all of that are things that i think i don't know that are just things to be real about yeah so yeah yeah Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Yes. I loved it. So much fun.